Hello, hello everybody, and welcome back. Root Beer here, and I'm looking at B4 on our 2017 Canadian Open Math Contest. Numbers A, B, and C form an arithmetic sequence if B minus A is equal to C minus B. Another way to say that is the sequence looks like uh, A, B, C, and B looks like A plus some number, and C looks like B plus the same number, which could also be written as A plus 2D. I usually give this D the name common difference. Uh, that's how I was always taught. Arithmetic sequences are like geometric sequences, except instead of multiplying by the same number to get the next sequence or next term in the sequence, you add the same number each time. But maybe they have a particular reason for writing it like this, so we'll, we'll keep it in mind. Uh, let A, B, and C be positive integers forming an arithmetic sequence with A less than B less than C. So it's definitely an increasing sequence. Let f of x be, uh, so we've got a quadratic with coefficients a, b, and c. Two distinct real numbers r and s to satisfy f of r is equal to s and f of s is equal to r. And we're also told r, s is equal to 2017 and we want to determine the smallest possible value of a. Okay, now a is a positive integer just like b and c are, so that might come into consideration. Uh, so let's, let's see what we can come up with here. So we're told right away that uh, if I plug r into the expression, we get s, and if I plug s into the expression, we get r. Okay. So, uh, what can we do from there? Now, we also know that R, S is equal to 2017, so we'll keep that off on the side. And you might be tempted to maybe multiply the expressions here. I think it's, hmm. The R, so we could, we could add them or we could subtract them, I think would be a nice natural thing to do. I'm not sure which one to do more. Um, yeah, the only other thing I could think about doing is maybe talking about the function f of f of x, but that's going to be a quartic, and I really don't want to work with that. Now, if we add them, we get something like this. And so we can say that... Um, r squared s squared plus b plus 1. Oh, no, b minus 1, b minus 1. Uh, r plus s plus c equals... Oh, no, there's no c. It's, uh, it's 2c, it's 2c. But there would be no c if we subtracted, so maybe I should subtract instead. Hmm. Is there anything I could? I suppose I could. I could rewrite this as r plus s squared minus two r s because I know what r s is. But that seems like it's got too many variables in it. Um, I suppose we could say r plus s is a root of this quadratic. Now it's plus 2c minus 2 times 2017 times a. So that would be 4034. So I suppose this is true, but I can't see anything immediately useful with this. It's just, it's another quadratic, a little different from before. I suppose we could, we could change the B's and the C's into A's and D's and get rid of some variables that way. But I think, I think maybe if we got rid of the C's by instead subtracting. A 
these aren't zero over here. Uh, this one's S, this one's R. So if I subtract, I'll get an S minus R over here. I'll get nothing here, so the C's go away. I'll get R minus S here. And I'll get A R squared plus, no, minus S squared. And now this over here is really just negative R minus S. So we could pull it over to the side. We can also factor out an R minus S here. So we'll get B plus 1 R minus S. And now, I think they said R and S are distinct. Where was it? Two, di two distinct real numbers, R and S. So R and S distinct. So we can divide by r minus s because you can divide by anything that's not zero. And so we'll get a r plus s, and that's kind of nifty because we talked about r plus s up here. It's a root to that quadratic. So, um, and then we've got plus b plus one equals zero. So r plus s is equal to negative one minus b all over a. And I could take that and plug that in here get rid of the R's and the S's. I can also get rid of the C's and the B's and we would just have something in terms of A and this common difference D. And that should make sense. We should get one equation with at least two unknowns because we can't solve for A, I don't think. We just need to determine the smallest possible value for A. That's how we answer the question. So uh, let's plug that in. So we get A, negative one minus B over A, squared. This is, this is going to be a little difficult to work with. b minus 1. I'm actually going to say it's minus b plus 1. Uh, this should be a minus sign. And then plus 2c minus 4034a. Okay, so now we just have a relationship there. So um, because it's an arithmetic sequence, we could say let A equal A, B equal A plus some common difference D, and C B A plus 2D. Now we can plug that in. That's going to be a bit of a pain, but we can do it. Uh, first, let's simplify it a little bit. B plus 1 squared, uh, A, and then an A squared on the bottom. We'll just leave an A. Uh, minus b squared minus 1 all over a, difference of squares, then plus 2c minus 4034a equals 0. Uh, let's multiply by a on both sides, expand this out. And so... Uh, say 2ac minus, oh no, the sign should flip. 4034a squared minus 2ac. And now those will cancel. You divide by 2, we'll be left with b plus 1 is equal to 2017a squared minus 2ac. This is now going to be a little easier to plug things in. So we'll get an a plus d plus 1. 2017a squared minus 2a a plus 2d. Okay. So this has to be true. Now a is an integer, d is an integer. And they're both positive. So we are told a is a positive integer and a is less than b. So their difference should be positive, a positive integer as well. Okay, so what can we do? We can isolate for A. I suppose we could isolate for D as well. Let's see what we can do. 
A plus B plus 1 is equal to 2007. I don't like how big that number is. That's not going to be pleasant to work with. Minus 2A squared. Oh, no, it should just be, should be minus an A, shouldn't it? Yeah, I forgot to divide the 2AC by 2. Oh, that could have cost me. So, uh, A squared minus 2AD. Yes. So I could bring the A's all over to, or the D's all over to one side. And this can become 2016A squared minus A minus 1. And so we can isolate for the common difference, which we know has to be a positive integer. We could also isolate for A. But I think with I think leaving the a squared like this, I suppose we could rearrange to get a quadratic in a with the coefficients in terms of d, and try and do something with that. But this two a plus one on the bottom, I feel like if if we could just get sort of like a constant like. I don't know, 5,004, or 504 on the top and like an A on the bottom, then we would know A has to be, in order to get an integer, we'd know A has to be like 7 or 8 or 9 or something like that. That would be nifty. So could we do something like that? Can we get just a constant on top? That's going to be tricky. Let's try and do some uh, polynomial long division. Two a plus one. So that goes in one thousand eight a many times. So subtract those, and you'll get negative one thousand nine a. Bring down the minus one. But I want an integer, so let's say minus 504, and I'll have an A, a negative A, and then a plus. 503. Hmm. Maybe. Well, let's see what we've got. So, so D is equal to 1008A, fine. Plus, no, minus, one, uh, minus 504. Oh, cool. I think 504 was my example number. Minus 504 plus negative a plus 503 2a plus 1. Hmm. So in order for d to be an integer, Negative a plus 503 over 2a plus 1 must be an integer. But a can change both the numerator and the denominator, so I don't like that. I suppose we could do multiply top and bottom by a half, maybe. So we get minus a plus 503 over 2a plus 1 is 1 half minus 2a plus 1006 all over 2a plus 1, which should be, I don't like this half out here. Minus 2a minus 1 plus 1007. So 
So this should be one half minus one plus one thousand seven two a plus one. So for this to be an integer, to be an integer one thousand seven over two a plus one must be an odd integer, but that should be okay. 1007 and 2a plus 1 are odd, and odd over odd is odd. So we just need 2a plus 1 to be a factor of 1007. Now, it, could, it can't be a negative factor because a is positive. So a is at least 1, so 2a plus 1 is at least 3. So what are the factors of 1007? Is it? Surely it can't be prime. Because then there would just be one, one answer possible. Although, you know, it's entirely possible that they did that and this, this minimizes, small as possible, uh, language is, is just uh, for show, just to sort of trip people up. Um... Oh, gosh. Uh, 1,007. I don't know the factors of 1,007. It's not a multiple of 3. Not a multiple of 7, because 1,000 isn't a multiple of 7. Uh, not a multiple of 11, because otherwise these two numbers, subtract these two numbers, should be a multiple of 11. Uh, 13? Thirteen, um, so that would be seven ninety-one. That'll give me a nine here. Ninety-seven is not a multiple of thirteen. Let's see. The square root of one thousand seven is about the square root of one thousand, which is about thirty-three point something. So I just need to check primes up to uh, thirty-one. Uh, 19, 23, 29, and 31. So we know these are out. How about 17? Uh, 17 goes into 5 times with an 85. That leaves me a 15. Uh, 157 is, so 187 is 17 times 11, and the difference between those two is 30. 30 is not a multiple of 17, so neither is 157. So 17's off the list. It's looking like this might be prime, actually. Uh, I'll try 19. How many times does 19 go into 100? Uh, 5 for a 95. And 57 is 3 times... Oh, okay. So 1,007... As factors 1, 19, 53, 1007. Uh, 2a, can't be, 2a plus 1 can't be 1. a is smallest when 2a plus 1 is smallest. So 2a plus 1 should be 19. a should be 18 over 2. So a should be 9. So that should work. That'll that'll make uh, this part an integer, an odd integer. Subtract 1 from it, it'll be even. You can divide by 2, so that'll be an integer. So this is an integer, so this is an integer, so D would be an integer, so B would be an integer, and C would be an integer. And there we go. Um, don't think there's anything else. I mean... I suppose we could check if uh, R and S really are real numbers. Now, do I actually have to go back and figure out B and C and make sure? Um, what would R and S even be? So, R, R plus S would have to be... Figure out R plus... Yeah, there's R plus S. So, I suppose we could rearrange to figure out R in terms of S, and then plug that into uh, 
this equation here and solve for s, but I really, that's going to be a bit of a headache, and I think we should be fine as is. But if you want to, double check. I'll, I'm going to double check the answers before posting this just to make sure, but I don't think we need to go all the way back and try and figure out what that r and s really are real numbers. I think I think we've, we've made it. a is going to be 9, and that gives me d as an integer, and so b and c will be integers as well. All right? And so uh, I guess the only thing to worry about would be, could D be negative? Just because of this minus sign here. But I think 1,008 times 9 is way too big uh, to that for that to cause a problem. So we're going to end it there. Uh, that was B4. So up next on our 2017 paper will be C1. We'll be starting the questions that have written answers required. So feel free to join me then, and I will see you guys in the next video.